it's always worth checking out the games of Vasil Ivanchuk. He is such a creative player. And in this game, we're going to see a, an extraordinary theme that normally you only see in problem chess, a Novotny. More on that in a second. So this is from the World Team Championships, played in Jerusalem. Going, they're ongoing. Um, and Ivanchuk is white, and he's playing against Jordan van Forest. So Ivanchuk playing for Ukraine, of course. Uh, van Forest for the Netherlands. Starts out as a Tarash. That's quite a trendy variation at the moment. And here, instead of the traditional G3, Ivanchuk plays E3, super solid. And now, usually this goes into an isolated queen's pawn position. And this is what happened after B3 and Bishop B2. I mean, black could just take here and get this traditional IQP position. Um, some people love playing with it. Some people like playing against it. I've always enjoyed playing with the IQP because I think it gives attacking chances. Bishop g4, very sensible. And after bishop e2, Van Forest makes this very principled decision to exchange and take on d4. Now, why is he given up the two bishops? Because in forcing this exchange, you can see that bishop on b2 is now blunted. So, you know, that's, it's a, a very reasonable way of playing for black, actually. But there is some imbalance. Yes, the pawn structure is almost symmetrical. But because white has the two bishops, then, you know, there's there's some play in this position. Knight a4 from Ivanchuk. Well, this is a good attempt to try and create some interest in the position. The knight wants to hop into this square. Rook e8 and now knight c5. I think this is a very interesting moment in the game. Uh, here, Van Forest plays b6. And after that, well, he's still okay. But I think black has to be a little bit careful. I think black has a very nice way to play. And that's to exchange bishop for knight. And play with the two knights against the two bishops. And then there's this nice idea. Queen g5. So with the idea of just putting the rook in the middle, but sometimes knight d2 as well can be very interesting. Often you find the knights, if they're on stable squares, then they can actually match the two bishops. But b6 played, and it's also reasonable, but I quite like this knight on d3 looking at the outpost. And these pawns are just a little bit sensitive now. Rook c8 defends the knight, rook e1, so all very classical, the rook's on open files, and the knight hits the outpost. Rook e2, so this rook slides across to c2, which looks quite nice, putting a bit of pressure here. But I think black is basically fine here, and, and I think knight b4 seems like a reasonable move, just to exchange lots of pieces. But instead, Van Forest, I think, gets a bit confused and puts the knight back. G3, that's nice to block out this bishop. G6, making room for the king to come here. Just you know, a little escape square off the back rank. Bishop G2, this is a crafty move, as we're about to see. Rook C7. Oh, dare I say it, split rooks, split rooks, sometimes that can be a massive mistake. Right, first question for you, what should white play in this position? What did Ivanchuk play here? Cheers. <clears throat> it's a really nice manoeuvre, <clears throat> excuse me, queen f1. Sporting the bishop so he can come to h3. Slice to slice down that diagonal. And that causes black massive problems.
because the queen needs to support that knight. You can see the double rooks looking very strong now. So rook e7, after bishop h3, that makes room for the queen. So the queen and rook still protecting that knight. Okay, knight e5. This is starting to look a bit uncomfortable for black. You can see if knight takes, pawn takes, rook takes, rook takes, and bishop takes pawn, and watch for that bishop. Rook c8 wins the queen, supported by the bishop. That bishop really is powerful in h3. So knight e5, that knight, what a, what a journey it's made to the outpost on e5. Beautiful square. Knight comes back to b8. Okay, your next question. White play. What did Chucky do next? Did he exchange off all the rooks on c7? No, he did not. Bishop a3. Everything is coming together for white now. Great move. So if that's taken, rook takes. And bishop takes and rook c8. Once again, the bishop on h3 plays its part, winning the queen. So queen d8. Protecting the bishop, protecting the rook. Seems to hold everything. Okay, what did Ivanchuk do now? And this is a very special moment in the game. White to play and do something brilliant. Knight d7. This is our Novotny. This interference move. This is absolutely brilliant. This breaks the coordination here. And it's an absolute killer. And look, it can be taken by one, two, three, four different pieces. They are all winning for white. So Novotny, let me give you a little... Definition. This is a device found in usually in chess problems, but uh, sometimes seen in actual play like here. So it's named after a certain Antonin Novotny. And a piece is sacrificed. I'm reading from Wikipedia now. A piece is sacrificed on a square where it could be taken by two different opposing pieces, but whichever makes the capture, it interferes with the other. Yes, it's all about interference. And you can see that just interferes with black's pieces here. So for example, if knight takes, then rook takes, bishop takes here, and white is the exchange up. Same applies with the other knight takes, you just exchange and that wins. If rook c takes d7, well, you play bishop takes and then rook c8. Everything just hangs together, wins the queen. So in the game, oh, and if bishop takes bishop, then rook takes c7. And once again, this is winning. This is nice. Bishop takes rook, rook c8. And if that's taken, check. And then bishop takes queen. Everything works. Beautiful. I mean, there's a certain symmetry about it as well, which is very appealing. Fanfarist gave up his queen after this. I mean, there really is nothing better. You can see this attack. Rook takes rook c8. So it's rook and a knight against a queen. Looks like a pretty straightforward technical win for white, but watch what happens. Now remember, the time control in this game was 45... Whoops, hang on a second. That's the position. 45 minutes plus 10 seconds increment for all the moves. So time is an issue. But, well, this still looks completely winning. It is completely winning. Uh, completely is... I shouldn't say completely. It's still winning for white. King g2 all looks very tidy. you just got to make sure you don't get caught in a knight fork. And here's an interesting moment. And the move that Ivanchuk makes, I think, is... Well, it looks very strong. 
but we're going to see it invites a few problems. The important thing is to try and break black's coordination, and this is a very nice move to do that. Queen a3. If the rook comes to c6, then you nudge back, queen a4, attacking the knight and attacking the rook. And so the position simplifies, and that is very simple. The queen is beautifully placed in the middle of the board, and you can just start rolling the pawns. Black has now count, no counterplay there. And instead, if rook d8, then queen c1. And the queen is about to come into c7. And again, black's coordination is just destroyed there. But b4 also looks very good. Starting to roll the queen side. But after knight c2, very hard move to foresee. Suddenly it's not so clear. So this is threatened. Perhaps the pawn is pushed. Going to push. But also this check comes. Now you can see how it starts to get a bit tricky because the king is not so well placed. The queen is also not so great. So Ivanchuk brought this back. But you can see with the pawn on b4, that square's a bit weaker as well. Black has found coordination. The bishop could be better placed. It still should be winning for white, but it's getting tricky. The queen attacked. And now here, after knight e4, this coordinates black's pieces beautifully. Obviously, if queen takes knight, then there's a knight fork. The knight protects the rook. Still, still should be winning, but it's not easy. Ivanchuk plays for time, repeats, or thinks he's repeating. In fact, rook f6 is a strong move here, but anyway, knight d3 played. It looks... Like a very understandable move, because Van Forest is breaking through and still coordinated. And here, well, Ivanchuk plays a4, and as we'll see, now it, then it gets very problematic. Bitch b7 is a good move, stopping the rook getting into play and also looking at that pawn there. But a4, it looks so natural, but after rook c6... Now white's king is in massive trouble. There are still lots of ups and downs. If you look at this with a computer, you'll see that, well, both sides miss things here, actually. Um, but I think the basic point is, in this kind of position, where the king is exposed, where these knights are floating around, supported by the rook, anything could happen, and it does. Ivanchuk plays what looks like a very natural move to prevent rook c2 check. But now black's next move is huge. Black to play. What are you going to do? Rook d1. Get out of that pin. It's really difficult. a5 played. Ivanchuk needs some to, to distract white here. But check here. Knight f2, attacking the bishop. Queen takes, and now it is game over. If the king goes in the corner, then rook h2 is mate. And after this, whoops, knight fork. Oh, nasty stuff. Knight takes queen. And just to add insult to injury, Knight number two comes over and swipes the bishop. And that's winning because if I hear Ivanchuk resigned, if king takes, knight check. And that scoops the queenside pawn and obviously with an extra piece and two extra pawns, black is winning. A tragedy for Ivanchuk. Just look at that move again. Knight d7. Should be winning. But Van Forest, very skillfully actually, with that move knight c2, managed to create complications here and even won the game. But yeah, a tragedy for Ivanchuk. I think we should leave that position on the board. Hope you enjoyed that. Oh, hang on. Let me show you another 
a quick example of a Novotny, but I forgot. I had actually planned this, would you believe? Um, this was from a game from the Champions Chess Tour final, recently played, between Aragaisi and Mamadyarov. Here, Aragaisi is attacking. You can see that this rook looks really good here. White's king is very snug. Black's king, not so good. How did Aragaisi use a Novotny theme to win this position? White to play and win. Are you ready? Bishop e5 check. Beautiful. You can see that here the rook defends the rook. This bishop defends along the diagonal. But bishop e5 check is a killer. If bishop takes, queen takes rook and mate next move. And if rook takes, doesn't matter which rook, now f6 is available. And again, mate next move. So there we go. Two examples of a Novotny within, well, a week of each other. Very rare. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks.